Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. We will continue our discussion. What we have done so far is to present the preference of workers using the indifference curve. The next stage here is to incorporate the concept of budget constraint into the analysis. Because given the worker's preference, that preference is still subject to the amount of budget available to the worker in deciding his or her opportunity set. Therefore, we can say here that the budget constraint can be defined as the worker's opportunity set, indicating all of the consumption, leisure combinations the worker to enjoy. To understand that, we know that the level of C or consumption level and L for leisure are constrained by time and income or budget available to the workers. So, we want to establish few important notation before we go to the budget constraint. First, we have the notation capital V here to denote the non-labor income, where these non-labor income are incomes available to the workers other than the direct work he or she is currently undertaking. This can be such as when someone wins a lottery, this is haram from an Islamic perspective, or you get income from your investment, that is the dividend, or maybe rental income. So this type of income, what we call as the non-labor income, is independent of hours work. Inheritance also can be part of non-labor income. The small h here denotes number of hours worked during the period. And then we have small w to indicate hourly wage. For this example, we take w as the hourly wage. Or this is also sometimes referred as to represent the wage rate. Wage rate can be measured in terms of hourly, daily, monthly or annually. And we assumed that this rate is constant regardless how long the worker has been working. This is just to make our analysis simple. Therefore, given the above notation, we can then represent a worker's budget constraint, assuming that saving is zero, as follows. So the level of consumption C is equal to W, wage rate, or hourly wage, time, H, hours work, plus the non-labor income, or V. So this expression basically would give us the overall amount of consumption that this worker can afford to enjoy given his or her available income, assuming that saving is zero. We also mentioned earlier that apart from the income constraint, there is also time constraint available to the worker. Therefore, this capital T indicates the amount of time or total time equal to hours work H plus L, capital L for leisure. So this will give us the total time for this worker. Therefore, we can rewrite the above expression here as follows. C, consumption, is equal to W, open parenthesis, T, minus L will give us H, hours work, plus V. So this is another way how we can re-express the budget constraint. And then we can go further to this expression where consumption can also be expressed as follows. WT plus V minus WL. Why do we need to rearrange the budget constraint to this expression because this expression is representing the linear line that we will see after this when we draw our budget line. 
the advantage of this expression is that when later we want to measure the slope of the budget line, it is easy to do so because we have put all the expressions into an easy way to do the calculus. Therefore, the above expression is a line, linear line, and the slope of the line is given by the following expression dc over dl and if you do first order difference you will get negative w that's why given the earlier expression we change that expression into the following in order for easy transformation when we want to do the first order difference here we have everything already arranged nicely so here if we find change in consumption over change in leisure that give us the slope of the budget line the answer is negative w so what we learn here is that the slope of the budget line is the wage rate we ignore the negative sign if you look at this budget line this is the intercept of the budget line or budget constraint to the y axis and this intercept is given by wt plus v so this will give us the total consumption this expression will give us the maximum amount of consumption if the worker spends all the hours available to him to work that means zero leisure time v is to represent the non-labor income and if you notice the budget line here as given by this line we draw it slightly above than the horizontal line because we assume that this particular worker has received some form of non-labor income such as maybe he receives inheritance or he wins some lucky draw and so on so his income is not zero assuming that he only relies on this non-labor income in other words if this worker enjoys 100 percent leisure time he spends all the hours available to him t for leisure he still can afford some level of consumption given by v over here i hope that's clear and this is how we draw the indifference curve remember we need to put a proper title and labels for our diagram and note that the slope of this indifference curve is equal to w or the wage rate from the understanding derived so far we learned earlier that we can represent a worker's preference using the indifference curve we learn here that we need to take into account the worker's budget constraint so over here we now combine the two previous understanding where we put our indifference curve and budget line or budget constraints into one diagram in order to know what's the optimal consumption leisure bundle the worker should decide this will therefore helps the worker to know how many hours he or she needs to work before we go further few points if you look at this diagram look at the labels over here we measure the level of consumption and over here the horizontal line measures two informations now from the beginning, I mentioned that as we go to the right of this horizontal line, the hours of leisure will increase. Reversing that, if we go to the left of the horizontal line, we then will find the hours of work will increase. So this is very logical. Notice also that in this diagram, we assume that the available time for the workers in a week is roughly equal to 110 hours per week. This is weekly hours 
Y110 based on a simple calculation assuming that and this is a standard assumption we make for this analysis given the 24 hours available to us we will allocate 8 hours for sleeping so then we are left with 16 hours and this 16 hours non-sleeping time is also called the discretionary time available to us where we then would decide between work and leisure therefore 16 hours time seven days per week that will roughly give you about 112 hours the other two hours we take it out if you like we can say these two hours may be taken out for some other reasons adjustments such as uh, two hours to consider as journey from home to work but regardless we can also say that the weekly hours roughly is equal to 110 hours available to the workers just to make it simpler what we find in the analysis is the following we find that the budget line fe describes the opportunity to a worker who has hundred dollar of non-labor income per week because this analysis is based on a weekly analysis and this worker gets a market wage rate of ten dollar per hour how to know this we can calculate the slope of the budget constraint and this worker has 110 non-sleeping hours available to him or her in a week how then this worker would decide between work and leisure recall our microeconomic analysis the optimal decision for this worker to choose between hours work or between leisure and consumption as presented by the vertical and horizontal lines of our analysis here is given by the tangential point indicated by point p this point is the optimal decision to this worker in deciding how many hours he needs for leisure and therefore work if given point p here we find that this worker would spend 70 hours for leisure per week and he would spend 40 hours working and given his working time he would earn some income how much is his income his income is 500 why because the slope of this budget line or budget constraint is equal to 10 that's equal to the wage rate 10 times 40 hours work that will give us 400 and this is what this 400 is the income earned by working and then we need to add the hundred dollar from the non-labor income so altogether this worker would earn five hundred dollar and he can spend this for his consumption therefore this is the optimal point for this worker what else we can see from this analysis to appreciate further why point p is the best decision for this worker in deciding how many hours of leisure and level of consumption bundle available to him let's focus on this point point y is point y favorable than point p your answer should be yes because point y lies on a higher indifference curve ui as compared to u star here higher indifference curve would indicate higher utility however the problem with point y is that it is non-attainable given the current wage rate the worker is constrained by his budget line therefore given the budget line the optimal choice for this worker is to choose the opportunity bundle given by point p here with 500 level of consumption and 70 hours of leisure time what about point a is point a attainable yes it is attainable because here we find 
it is on the budget constraint but the problem with point a is it is on a lower indifference curve indicated by u0 and therefore the opportunity set given by point a that is let's say the level of consumption is 1100 and here we find that this worker would have very few hours for leisure most of the time is working and that would give this worker less utility less satisfaction so a is not optimal for this worker so what we learn here is from a new classical theory when it comes to deciding how many hours to work we are using the indifference curve analysis and budget constraint to identify the tangential point because that tangential point basically give us the optimal consumption and leisure combination mix for the worker i have explained all the points here the same as well for this one the next point here is to understand further about the tangency condition remember that the slope of the indifference curve is equal to the slope of the budget line where this is the point where we get the optimal decision for the worker this is a very important rule we derive from this analysis and this is where we find our point p given this condition we know that the slope of the indifference curve is the marginal rate of substitution and it is given by the marginal utility of leisure over marginal utility of consumption and this should equal to w or uh, wage rate or we can re-express further this rearrange this where we we make it like this where the mu L, marginal utility of leisure over W should equal to marginal utility of consumption. Marginal rate of substitution is the rate at which a person is willing to give up leisure hours in exchange for consumption. And this should equal to the wage rate. That is the rate at which market allows the worker to substitute one hour of leisure for consumption and this expression tells us that the last dollar spent on leisure buys the same unit as the last dollar spent on consumption so that therefore would give us the position of an optimal point for the worker to decide on how many hours he should spend for leisure and work. I think I stop here. Before I stop, let's make a quick recap. We learned earlier about the concept of budget constraint. And then from that understanding, we combine our earlier understanding about the worker's preference using the indifference curve analysis. And combining that analysis together with the budget constraint analysis then we can identify the optimal consumption leisure decision for the worker where the tangency between indifference curve and the budget constraint would give us the optimal point or the tangency point and this tangency point basically is when the slope of the indifference curve is equal to the slope of the budget constraint this is one important rule for worker in deciding the level of consumption and leisure i'll see you again in the next discussion thank you very much